actually, I would like you to to see my mistakes and uh, to point me there, like that I did a mistake and it's wrong and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's yeah. begin. <clears throat> and for example, what could I have done better and buy maybe, you know, better items or so and so. Let's look at this again. You're on the right side, you have one, your score is really good, looks like you did have a lot of impact. So Yes. I assume this game in this game you were ahead most of the time. Would that be correct? Yes. Alright, well games from my head are not as good a learning experience as the ones from behind because uh, when you are ahead the opponent simply do not have as much uh, opportunities to punish your mistakes. Uh, but, actually, but but yeah. but we can we can definitely look at this at uh, how to win harder, how to capitalize on things we might not be seeing in the first place. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I could have chose maybe a worse game, you know, and uh, then like it's easier to point my mistakes. But I want to know uh, from a better game what could I have done better, even better, you know, so yeah, I can yeah improve. makes sense makes sense sure. Uh, yeah. How how would you yourself describe uh, this game overall? Do you feel like you've done the best you could, or were you just spotting moments where you could have uh, like approached a certain situations differently? In this particular match, yeah, uh, I think I've done good decisions because uh, my team followed me, and um, yeah, pretty much it. I mean, I'm. I'm trying to play with my team most of the time, but my weakness are that I'm a little bit emotional when it comes to teams when you, you know, make mistakes and team flames at you and so, and instead of muting them, you're just getting angry and angry, and angry you know, and make mistakes step by step, so the, the game gets worse. So usually you try to lead your team over the mic? Uh... Yes, I, I I enjoy playing with the mic more than just, you know, staying and... Yeah, like, uh, would you say you're the... If the game goes well, are you the shot caller? Are you rather your team to follow you? Uh, I would say 50-50 or 60-40. 60 then yes and 40 no. Okay. Dep and depends what? on the matchup. Because uh, if, 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 the, if um, a hero is stronger, then I will follow him. If not, then they will play with me because I'm stronger. It depends on the matchup. I mean. Understood. And what about this match? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Sorry. Uh, in this match, uh, this is the thing we talked about. Were you the one leading leading the game here? No, I did lead the game here. You did? Yes. In That's this cool. particular match, I did. Yeah. Understood. Let us begin. Uh, you're going to be leading against Tiny, I, I suppose? Yeah. Any particular thoughts, like how you yourself were thinking to yourself, like what you should be doing before the lane, like your starting items, how would you try to approach the lane, would you make it a kill lane, a farm lane, would you just see how it goes, go with the flow? What were uh, your thought process when you had the information that the enemy mid is going to be tiny? Mm -hmm. So, uh, because he's a melee hero, but he's probably, he's definitely have more HP, so it's kind of a little bit hard to kill him, but if you keep harassing him, then if you're winning levels ahead, you can easily kill him and get a war chat, and you can just jump and kill. So, my thoughts was to straight harass him more and more, and win the lane in a w easy way, and probably max my uh, first kill. I don't remember, to be honest, if I maxed first or third. But I think I maxed first because I wanted to harass him more. Uh, but first, also you can farm, so it's it's literally depends on the situation and how the lane it goes, you know. So. All right, it's it's a good thing you added that your priority was to farm because uh, as a harassment tool, the Q is extremely un unreliable. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> good point. Right, first mistake right here. I mean, okay. even before the matchup begins, you you know from experience that Tiny has uncontested, undeniable 
the one of the highest right clicks damage in game. So sure. if sure. you try to right click the creeps, he will always win. So in this situation, there's nothing else you can do but to place remnant in anticipation of him denying. You'll not even try to win the right click war. Sometimes you will he will hit it, sometimes not, but it's always best not to risk it. The first few waves are the most important. So wasting mana as long as you make sure that mana clicks with the creep is acceptable. So let's say for example we're playing against OD. Yeah. We know I can't I can't kill him at all. Well yeah. So but I'm trying to harass him as much as I can because I'm trying to do the impossible. I mean the the not because it's I know it, I can't kill him, but I'm still doing this. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I'm just pointing out a weakness of mine, and that's it. And that's... Oh, oh, you're you're saying the things that you know you are bad at, but you still yes, keep yes, doing yes, it. yes. Yeah, okay, correct. I, I understand now. I understand now. Yeah, sorry about sorry, it. Sorry, sorry for a bad explanation. If in case. Yeah, okay, I got it. So yeah. <laughs> I suppose my job today will be to try to win you off doing these, uh, wouldn't say impossible, but not really efficient things. Yeah, yeah, I'll be glad. Thank you. All right, so <clears throat> going nowhere again. Uh, as a storm, as a mid laner in general, the first thing you'll want to do, if you want to push the lane, and in most cases, do you do want to push the lane? In this game, you do want to push the lane. So when you, when you approach the lane and you want to push the lane, the first thing you're going to want to do is... Uh, well, do you know the answer here? Yes, secure the range creep. No, not, not, not yet, before I push that. the lane. You draw the aggro. Uh, I didn't. I didn't aggro creeps. <laughs> you should. You should. You should draw the aggro. That's the first thing ah, you do. Okay, okay. You're supposed to do that as... The, the moment you, the, any second you get, any second you're not working on the creep's health or harassing the enemy, you should manipulate creep's positioning to your advantage. That is drawing aggro. Mm. Okay, well, I suppose I kind of know that, but not doing all the time. Because so far, I haven't seen it once you rattling the enemy mid and making the creeps go towards you. And that's the first wave. Like I said, it's the most important. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if I have any examples of my own real quick. No, I understand what you mean. I understood. Sorry. My eternal gratitude. So you, you might see that as soon as Arc Warden shows up, the first thing I will want to do is manipulate click. the creeps. Yes, click on the Arc and aggro creeps. That's right. And now, what is happening? Both, the, no, both, both of the range it. creeps uh, will start to die, and the lane will go either way. Because I have better wave clear than Arc Warden, it's going to be me who's going to send the wave towards him. And that is 90% of the time the play you want to do in your games. Okay. I'm not going to say always, there are exceptions. But as a general climbing rule, if you want to raise an MMR, as long as you push the lane, as long as you're free farming like this, you're gonna climb. Like in your Got example, it. yeah, you stood in the middle and tiny just had a free reign right clicking the creeps, denying yours. In this example, because we have manipulated the creeps, we have easily secured, I think, three, maybe four last kits here, which is almost the best thing, with minimal mana investment as well. Yeah, that's true. We Thank go. you for the explanation, for the example. Yeah. to yours so this is this is gonna be the biggest thing that's gonna increase your MMR really fast uh, just as long as you keep in mind that you're supposed to manipulate the creeps and push that's 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 the easiest thing you're gonna you're gonna find doing yourself and then having a positive outcome mm -hmm. like everything else will be minor details but this this is the biggest one so far Unless I can identify something else. Okay. Yeah. So watch watch this uh, first wave again, and just imagine what would have happened had you manipulated the creeps and pushed the wave. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't. I just uh, saw. Like this melee group like... should be in your high ground, and Tiny simply just wouldn't go there because of the implied harassment. Yeah. And, and in that case, you wouldn't even need to use remnant. Just right click because Tiny wouldn't go up. Normally. Yeah, that's true. Another really minor thing, which I think you might be doing yourself from time to time, but not in here, is if you, if you remnant try to uh, manipulate creeps' health. Not positioning, not just positioning, positioning as well, but health as well. Like in this. In this frame right here where I paused, you could right click the melee creep as well, as long as they're ranged. And with that preparation, you would get both of them with just one remnant. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. That's true. Efficiency, little things, little, little yeah, yeah, things no, efficiency. The little things adds up and it's more important yeah, too. Yeah. It is true. Like right here, you are manipulating the creep aggro, which is good, but the, the bad thing is, is that you're doing it not because you you consciously chose to manipulate, but because you're simply you're right-clicking tiny mindlessly. So I shouldn't f shouldn't harass him. Uh, the first in this way in this, what in this way. Like yeah. against, against uh, heroes that usually have a hard time against storm. Yes, you might want to spend extra time harassing them, but against Tiny, it's always best to just focus on the wave sending him towards his high ground instead of harassing. Well, uh, he does I agree, have. But I... Yeah, sorry. Continue. He does have self. He does have mangoes. Like any minor damage you're gonna, do, you're not gonna do much because you're still level one. There's no overload. Any minor damage you're gonna do, he's just gonna use a few tangos. Worst case scenario, Salvin, and he's just having battle anyway. So your efforts are not really leading anywhere here against Tiny. My thinking was because three creeps was hitting him and me and then me as well, so a little bit more damage. That was my thinking. It would make sense if you were in the side lanes, because creeps plus your lane partner, you can do some nasty damage with here. But here, uh, Tiny can just sidestep and no longer take damage. So the, how do I say it? Time invested into harassing him is proportionately worse than the time you could have spent investing in creeps positioning. Okay. If understood. you understood what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And again, perfect, perfect uh, moment to just right. right click tiny and get those creeps way back so he has no chance of trying to deny them. And then you can play economically and use the right clicks instead of remnants. Mm. Uh, do you notice anything else in particular about the second wave? Mm. I mean, what, how should I do when second wave appears? This wave in particular in this game, the second wave, what's special about it? Just more creeps, and I need to aggro mine to to less hit mine creeps and try not to allow and harass him more, and that's it because there are more creeps. Yes, there are more creeps. This is correct. So, so basically, I can push the you, lane. You've, you have made a double wave, right? Yes, that's true. You're level two. You have a double wave. This is textbook. You being way more powerful right now than tiny. So if you, if you can recognize those moments, you're level 2, you have double wave. As soon as you recognize those moments, you gotta push the wave in. Because Tiny will have a really hard time fighting against a double wave at level 1, right? Mm, makes sense, correct. But is it a mistake to try to bait him as well? Because he's trying to deny my creeps, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play with him, you know, mind games. If you know what I mean? Because he's trying to deny mines and I pull my uh, his creeps to me so he can attack them and then I harass him. It Man. is a play, but it's not the most optimal play 
in this scenario. If and when you recognize that there's a double wave and you can push the wave in, what happens then? The tiny is being sent under his tower. He does not have any other wave clear other than his right clicks. There is no way mm -hmm. he's gonna mess with your denies. So instead of mind games and maybe tiny is denying you, maybe not, you send the wave in and there's like 90% chance the tiny will not simply have the time to deny because he'll spend every single one of his resources and attention to his creeps, to his last hits, that is. Okay, yes, because he's, if he's not less hitting the creeps, then he's just losing, losing gold. So. Yeah, exactly. The tower's competition, he doesn't have wave clear, he's level 1, just, just a massive advantage for you. Okay, yeah, thank you. I mean, eventually it does happen. Eventually, all the creeps, all the creeps do double wave him. But again, the problem is that not because it does happen. That's good, but it only happened naturally, and not because yeah. you have consciously caused it to happen. I understood. And the second part is what's what what makes a what separates an immortal mid laner and uh, say something like an ancient mid laner. An immortal one will cause things to happen. An ancient one will simply react to things happening. Yes, I understood the meaning. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, it's true as well, so... Yeah, see how many, how much freedom you had to mess with his denies, and he, he definitely missed some. Because of the disadvantage he had. Yes. <laughs> And the next wave is pushed under him, so we can just do the same thing. Uh, again, we pause here. That is the moment you right-click those, you right-click tiny and drag those creeps back. Every three seconds you can manipulate creeps to a better positioning. You try to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Again, this happened. But I, I cannot be sure because this happened because it just felt like right-clicking tiny naturally. No, no, no. Oh, I oh. wanted to aggro creeps. I wanted to. Okay, very good, very good. It always has to be the latter. You always have to choose consciously how do you want creeps to be positioned. Okay. Can you guess what I'm gonna say here? Uh, I need to clear the wave and uh, to, yeah, to clear the wave and go to stack and take uh, take how it called. They're on. I mean, no. yes, but there are better options. Something else. Something you missed. Uh, to block the creeps, maybe. Block the creeps? How? Wh whose creeps? Uh, mine creeps. My creeps. No. Last chance. Then... Wait a second. <sighs> maybe return back to Tiny and hit him to his self to not healing anymore. I don't know. That That's my last option. Nah. All right, let's let's break this down. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. Where is the wave position? Oh, okay. Where, where does it. the wave position? Yeah, you got it. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. I need to block his creeps to position my creeps at the high ground. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, was looking to the map now where the creeps are. So. Yeah. Uh, and why, we, why why would we do that? Because uh, it will be very easy for me to harass him, and I can man manipulate the creeps again and harass him, and easily go to rune as well. Yeah. Later. Your first choice was to clear the wave so you could go stack or take the rune. Uh, this is still viable. On top of what you said before, if if you freeze the wave here, because what's going to happen? The creep waves are going to meet, yeah. and in the next five seconds, you're going to have really easy, really easy time to just killing those two creeps first, because one is low and the other will go down just with a few hits and the remnant. And after those two are cleared successfully and without interruption, what's going to happen is that the remaining wave, both enemies and yours, is going to be on your high ground. It's not going to be pushed anywhere, so you'll have You'll have both those creeps already cleared, and you'll be free to go both stack and take the rune. 
And once you return, the wave is still there. Yeah, just yeah. like that, we have accomplished like four tasks at once. <clears throat> at once. Very efficient, correct? Very efficient. <clears throat> yes, agree. Good point. I mean, you know, um, for me, it's literally sometimes... Oh, you see, I did bug the creeps a little bit, but never mind. <laughs> um, it's easier when somebody see your mistakes so you can improve them. Yeah. I mean, the, the result is, is uh, pretty much the same. The creep still met at the high ground, but because you have walked back, the tower has messed with you, with your ability to last hit the range creep and you missed it. And that's, right. again, those little tiny inefficiencies, they, mm -hmm. they add up. I agree. And right here, right at this moment, is what I've talked about just a few seconds ago, is that if the wave is here, it's not going to go anywhere, that's your cue to stack the small camp, take the rune, and then return. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> and what I've done, I'm curious, because I don't remember full this game. Yeah, it didn't go. Okay. <clears throat> oh. You're also playing way, way too aggressively, considering Tyne is level 3 and there's nothing preventing him to just avalanche you, walking up to you, tossing you back, and using his free toss to finish you off. You're you're literally dead if, if the tiny was a better player here. Well, three hundred for HP. Uh, he, he Probably did. yes, yeah. If he oh no 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 because he, he didn't had toss he just played with his first and third I guess. Uh. Oh, if he was a better player, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry exactly. Never assume. If Tiny does or doesn't, always assume the worst. Assume yes. he did skill toss. Assume he's the best player in the world. Do not, do not try to feed on chance. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's another weak weakness of mine. That's true. <clears throat> and, and why are we chasing him here? Do you think you could do? I don't remember. Him? I don't remember to be honest. I, I'm I'm just literally curious to see what it happens. Yeah, because I mean. Because this is a stupid move. Yeah, if we I know, another... I know. Yeah, sorry, say it. If we put another player in, the, in your perspective, he is going to say that you shouldn't chase Tiny. I mean, you yourself can realize that you shouldn't chase Tiny. Yes, yes, yes. Well, maybe we'll just, just... Let's just see. Yeah, maybe let's maybe just... you were distracted and wanted to, to punish him for no reason. I don't know. No, that that's a stupid move. But yeah, as long as, as long as you recognize, then I have nothing more to add on here. So let's see how we could have played those last 10 seconds better. Right here, luckily he didn't kill you. Yeah. <laughs> but then as, as soon as you see him leaving, instead of chasing you, what's the better? Instead of chasing him, what's the better play? To push wave and go for the run. Easy. Exactly. He's leaving. He's not going to be he's <laughs> not going to be messing with your last hits. You're just you have no health. And this is the only moment in the next few seconds that you are free to approach the lane without dying. Yeah, there was. Uh, this is what I'm, I was talking about because I'm trying to do more than I should, you know. Yeah, I see. I see. So, yeah, probably. So the best play here is just simply let him go, aggro those creeps to the range one, and in like mm -hmm. three to four seconds, every single creep is dead, even yours, because you can deny them on the on the way to the rune. Yep, agree. Fair enough. That's true. And I lost the creep because of that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And you were also dangerously close to allowing him to deny it. Yeah. Just look how close he got. Hmm. Lucky me. <laughs> and now, uh, those things do add up because you did not send the wave first and take the battle. I mean, at this stage, you should already be back in the lane harassing Tiny. Because if. Ooh, let, let because he's go. pushing now the lane, and so I can't harass him because he go back, right? Not necessarily, uh, because we have spent five seconds doing nothing and not pushing. Just mm -hmm. imagine right now, 
that you have five more seconds in that's five more seconds you would be already walking back to him and what's happening here is you'll have full health near full mana with the bottle i would say the better play would be to have vortex at level three because you have noticed a tiny likes to dance in the middle of the waves he's not being careful you can kill him you can at least harass him badly so with those five extra seconds and vortex what's happening you're simply zoning out tiny from this moment on yeah, I can see it clearly now, watching this. Because yes. he's even lower than half HP, so yeah, I can just yeah. zone him. But go on his high ground and just kill Crips if he exactly. comes. He's he, dead. he is zoned. He, he would be literally zoned. But right now, because we don't have those 5 extra seconds and no Vortex, he is the one having free time in the lane where he shouldn't. Yeah, this, is, this is the perfect example of you missing the opportunity to win harder. I mean, mm -hmm. you're still farming, you're still getting creeps. Uh, you're still winning mid. But we did find so many opportunities to win harder. Yeah, but this is not the, the the MMR where I want to stock to, you know, I want to grow to climb up. So Should be really easy. I mean, those fundamentals we'll, we'll talk about should easily get you to Immortal as long as you practice them correctly. Like here, if, if you had Vortex, he's dead. Yeah, I agree. That's true. Even I can see that. So my problem is probably time skipping. I mean, losing. Probably not doing the correct thing at the time. You know, I mean, the perfect thing on the perfect yeah. time. <clears throat> okay, now tell me what's the correct move here, if you can see it. Okay, and after I know he is back, so I just push the lane, or I can push the lane and go on stock camp and come back to the lane. What if, what if, you do <clears throat> nothing like that, but instead, you walk up a little to his high ground, oh, so, so you can see his incoming wave and him. You know he's gonna be really low, you know he's not gonna want to approach you. And you're gonna sit there for about 3 seconds. In those 3 seconds what's gonna happen is that his melee creep will bring your range creep to about half of HP. Correct. So and he's gonna be afraid to go last hit it. So it's yeah, a free, yeah. free deny. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, good point. Actually very good, I like it. Yeah, I mean, it, it might not happen exactly as 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 I'm as I'm telling it because uh, the creeps might meet sooner. He might go aggressive with the spells, but it, the general idea is that you should recognize those moments. If it's too risky, sure you don't go for it. But as long as you see it yourself, then you have the chance to decide if it's too risky. Instead no, of it's not, not. Yeah, instead of not even seeing those. So it's yeah, not one, because... one, one yeah, more thing to, to look out for. Okay, yeah, makes sense. For, for moments like these. I agree. I really like this, you know, small moments that could improve my game. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing mistakes, but um, it's kind of maybe not hard, or it's just hard to admit I can't even understand sometimes. <laughs> like he's dying, or I'm dying, I don't know, I'm dying. Yeah, he should have died here, not you. Yeah, I agree. Now I oh, lost well. the wave. Yeah, it, it happens, it happens. You you might have been ganked anyway, you might have died anyway. So it's no point of hanging up on that. Just my only advice is that if you are against... Let, let me put it this way, let's rewind the world. Like, you're against Tiny and that... That's the thing you should have known before even the laning started, is that Tiny has insane burst potential, like 500 damage kind of insane. So you, having two branch tangos, you have no reason not to use them and stay at above the health threshold where he cannot kill you, even with a gank. Mm -hmm. That's just you being a little bit careless with your health pool. Yeah, I agree. It's as if he's playing anti mage. No, he's he's tiny. He can bring you down real, real fast, real soon. Yeah, I agree. And 
the consequence of that is that if you have just a little bit more HP, that's it. The trade you win, he he dies. Yeah, should have bottle before going down. No trouble. Ideally, you should have used branch tango twenty seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true as well. Well, okay, we'll learn from that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not really sure that my comment was helpful here. I mean, pretty sure you can see it yourself, like watching back. Like, why am I have health? I should have healed. Yes. Well, this is basic things. Uh, the I would say that the things with the creep manipulating is more um, more of my mistakes. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Because, for example. When you told me to go high ground and to wait the melee creep to hit the to hit the range creep, so I could deny it. I, I didn't understand that. I mean, I see it as an option now because you told me, but I didn't do that at that time. So this is a mistake. That's true. Small but mistake. Well, it's not uh, as much as a mistake as a opportunity not being seen a mistake would be but this is more you... efficient yeah 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 a mistake would be you sitting at half health against the burst hero let's put it this way a mistake is something that 1k player could watch at the replay and say that's a mistake and inefficiency would be something that a 4k player would not recognize as inefficiency because he does not know such thing exists but a 5k mm -hmm. 6k they would see it and they would tell themselves hmm, i could have done this better but a 4k player wouldn't even see what is this that they should have done better okay yeah fair enough Denied. i'm curious to see how this goes <laughs> well uh, so far i think we've, we've we've been stacking up some pretty good insight on your laning yes already we did i think and this this is coming from a winning Winning lane where you're ahead. Imagine how much stuff we could come up with against a losing lane. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's I, why we have multiple sessions. I totally agree with this. Did you purposely wait out on the Vortex just so you can have a static remnant cooldown? Uh, can we watch again? Or were we just going with the flow? Probably going with the flow, but just let me watch. I wasn't paying attention here. Sorry. Because what you did was the absolute correct play. Wait, wait. I Vortex to, yeah, like to most... activate the third skill. Okay. Remnant, Remnant, and then... Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Remnant, then Vortex. So my, my cooldown will break uh, after I hit again and Remnant again. I know, this is a combination of, uh, of casting. Yeah, I just want to know if you have lucked out into this skill, or were you consciously saving the vortex? No, it's consciously. Sometimes, sometimes it's not. I mean, not that it's not, but because I missed up sometimes. But I know how to do it. Oh, let's 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 see if you, if you understand what might have happened correctly. Like right now, you okay. have vortex of cooldown. You would use vortex. You would right click, and you would use the remnant. You could still do the same combo you did before. Why didn't you? Once again, please. I apologize for this. Okay, can, so can we repeat again, please? In five seconds, you're going to do Vortex, right-click, Remnant, right-click. Uh -huh. That's going to happen in five seconds. But yes. right now, at this frame, yes, you could do the same combination. Why did you choose not to? Like right here. In the next one second, why didn't you vortex? Right click, remnant, right click. Mm. Mm. Then it was the I... correct play. I just want to, I just want yes. to understand if you understand why it was the correct play. Because it gives you more damage. No, no, no. No, then then I don't, don't understand something. Then okay, let, let, let's break it down. If if you do the combo now, time okay. is gonna be at like. 100 HP maybe, mm -hmm. and what's gonna happen? He's gonna simply walk away. Yeah, and okay. I'm not gonna kill him. But yeah, by accidentally, I assume, holding out your combo a little longer, 
what's going on. You're giving him a hope that he can kill you. Oh. You are literally baiting him into not going back to his tower. Because right now he could just walk away. Yes, yes. I did it, I did this not not on uh, I did this on purpose, as you said, to give him uh, an option to uh, how, how you said it before, sorry. Yeah, great, because a lot of players because, because yeah, uh, say it, sorry. A lot of players and probably myself included would have blue vortex <laughs> just the first chance I got. So yeah, this was quite uh, impressive if it was no. done on purpose. Uh, it was on purpose because I remember uh, most of the time when I gank and uh, like SF or something with like this, he can he wants to ulti or he wants to DP. Doesn't matter if you use it first, and he will do this very easy, so, and you can't kill him. That's why you need to damage him for the third skill on remnant, and then vortex when he wants to when when you see the uh, that he can't go anymore. I mean, and he realizes this as well. Yeah, classic baiting. Yes, yes, that's true. I've probably misunderstood a bit. Sorry about that. Oh, good. <clears throat> and sorry again for for my English. I'm sure you don't understand everything what I'm saying. So, well, if I have trouble, I will just will just ask that you rephrase it. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Right, same mistake again, like, you know when Tyrant is going to return, he's going to be full on resources, you know what's going to happen, he's just going to try to combo you down, so there's no reason for you to not, again, not to use Branch Tango if you have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Against Heavy Burst Heroes, it, it's always best to stay tapped up, unless you are sure that they cannot get you, Tiny can get you. Okay. Okay, makes sense, of course. See, just look how much damage he done. We just, just yeah, like yeah. Q. <laughs> That's true. And if you were topped off, you could have just aggressively zipped in as soon as you got level six, and then brought his HP down by half, essentially making sure that if he doesn't heal up. He's gonna be dead the next rotation Vortex comes up. Uh, and, that, and that is, in essence, <laughs> once again zoning him. Makes sense, of course. I uh, have one question. <clears throat> How do you think is it's easier with the first skill maximize against Tiny or Vortex, where it's either way? I mean, you can win in, in both ways. I As... mean, more efficient. More efficient to do what you harass or to plus it. Just basically win the lane and get your items, and probably kill him. <laughs> well, you, can't you, have, see, you, you cannot. Yeah, have you can't have. No, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's you what I'm saying. Yeah. direction. So what yes. I would do in, in in if if I was in your game, I would I would see how Tyne is playing. I would draw a conclusion by level two that I can I can efficiently trade with him and maybe go for a kill. So mm -hmm. if I decided that it's, it is like 51% chance that is, it is a successful kill lane, I'm going to max overload. Okay. Because I will want yeah. to bring him down. That's if what I, I want to hear. If I conclude that he he would just use avalanche, mm -hmm. toss, red clicks every chance he gets, it means he's pushing the way, it means he doesn't want to fight you, it means he will stay mm -hmm. high health, it means he will not trade with you. You cannot do much to him. That's perfect, where you go remnant perfect. and just and just uh, maximize your own farm. Perfect. That's the perfect answer. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. If if you're both dancing, it's a potential kill lane. If it's a potential kill lane, you max overload. Yes, because because you see when somebody wants to push the lane and vice versa. <clears throat> yeah, that may make very much of sense. <clears throat> good point. Very good. One remnant, one right and click, one overload, dead, yeah. one right click, two seconds, creeps dead, you move on. Yeah, hope I did that on the way back. <laughs> Stupendous. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
I was giving information here that Tiny Ghost Top, I remember this. As soon as you notice, I, I was the probably enemy think is, ready is to. Leaving. Well, you can see it on the minimap here, it's your perspective. You, you, yeah, should, yeah. Can, you can always just glance at the minimap every few seconds and just as soon as you notice, the Tiny is leaving. Aside from notifying your team, what else you do? You just immediately start pushing. Like immediately. Like the second you see Tiny on screen, you just push, 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 push. Oh. Not, not, not only that, you also push because the rune timer is coming up. So that's two reasons, two good reasons for you to just mm -hmm. immediately start pushing. Yeah, perfect, perfect. This is relevant for all of the MMR players. Like, if the enemy mid leaves, you have, you have two options. Option one is to put some pressure on the mid tower. Option two is to be ready to counter gank, should the enemy be close to their tower. Uh, this is not always the case. The second part, you shouldn't always respond to ganks. For example, if there's if your offlane is being dove and the offlaner can get out just fine and just take support dice or plus five dice, then of course, no need for rotate. But most of the time, the better play is to just, if the opponent leaves, you claim the free rune and do some pressure on the tower. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, yes, that's perfect. I check the rune, go back, take the rune, watch top, you moron. Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, I'm saying to myself. <laughs> All right, so can you tell me the right play at this moment? Okay, I should watch top and because Tiny is, is chasing someone there up. So I need to watch top and just straight TP. Uh, let's rewind back what I said just a minute ago and think back like that. We have two options. Option one is, is pressuring the tower. Option two is rotating yes. to maybe counter gank when in the game is option one momentarily the better option to to gank now un under what conditions pushing the tower is way more desirable than counter gank oh then counter gaining um well i guess i don't know it's when you have the siege creep with you. Say again? It is when you have the siege creep with you, the catapult. Oh, the catapult, okay. The catapult, okay. Why? Because now you do because double the damage to the tower. The, yes, that's true. The correct yeah. play here is to once again shove as soon as you can and send those creeps under his tower. You can always yeah. take the rune later. This is top priority. You can okay. even ignore his ganks. This is top priority. Because now you have the perfect chance. As a storm, as a hero that doesn't hit towers well, you now have just been given the tools naturally to hit the tower well. And you must use it. Okay. I understood. <clears throat> what I'm doing. And, and seeing you walk away from the siege creep opportunity just breaks my heart. Okay. <laughs> So I want to kill anti mage, not tiny, not help top. I don't know why. Now, yeah, as you're walking, just think to yourself: Can you kill anti mage? Yes, with the sports, yes, I can because I have um, I have region as well, so I am hundred percent sure I can. I think. And if you wouldn't have region, could you kill anti mage? And, and probably, um, mm, probably yes as well. Be depends on the support. If you're doing the things right. Yeah, I because he doesn't have level six, so I'm not really scared about this. Even if he had level six, I would say still probably yes, because you have yes. mana. But yes. would that be the right play? Well probably I think at this moment then yes. I don't know what to say. Because it's scary, yes. So that's why weakening his carry is probably a good play. Yeah, it's I'm gonna say it's a fifty fifty in most scenarios. Uh but what what makes this a 40-60? Let's assume that you do not have a region rune. What makes this a 40-60 is that even if you kill anti-mage, you, you would have no mana. Low mana, correct. And if you teleport middle, 
whoever is coming to middle is going to dictate the lane from there because you would have no mana where you have to go base. Right now, the play is correct because you have Legion Rune, so yeah, sure, I would say go for the anti mage kill. But I just want to make sure that you would not repeat the same play under normal circumstances because not only the, are there now questions about your mana efficiency and going back, but you would also be again missing the siege creep wave. But well, okay, but I have a question now. Um, I probably remember what was my thinking back then because I thought the region, so I don't know if I was chatting with the guys up top there or not. Because if I'm not wrong, probably I will kill anti mage, activate the rune, and go top. If if I'm not wrong, I'm not really sure. But I think this is a very efficient way. I mean, uh, why 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 is more efficient to push the tower when you can kill two people where where this two early kill doesn't mean a lot for the game? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. The region rune allows you way more wiggle room in deciding what's the right or wrong play because it's it's if you have like arcane DD region, more often it's the gang is gonna work out and you'll still have enough resources to go back and be efficient elsewhere. I, I just wanted to point out that if you didn't have region rune, then you might have other options. Yeah, yeah, well, that's true. And I basically walked that I, because I wanted to tip it up, probably. Oh, my support fucked this up? No. no one, little, I... one little tip I have is that before... Uh, you still you have the surprise factor <laughs> to right-click him. And I would say saving Vortex for when he blinks out would be the better play. Okay, yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, if you didn't have region, that would be totally Yes, yeah, the, the disaster, I agree. Very much agree. And you're very lucky no one touched you <laughs> during the Yes, period. yes. I know. I was probably thinking the same way yeah. when I was the, exec playing. the execution was not very very well executed. Because I was waiting for him to hit me, kind of. Yeah. So I can still... Yes, yes. Region. Okay. okay, it worked out. It was half luck, but it worked out, so that's, that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you can afford to walk back because the creeps are static in the middle, there is no tiny, but should the tiny be present in the middle lane, you would need to immediately TP back. Okay, thank you for this. Do you, do you understand why? Uh, to not let him farm? <laughs> yeah, not let him farm to prevent tower damage. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One more thing, if you look at the minimap right now, what do you feel not good about in the middle lane in particular? Tiny is there. He's farming. In in nine seconds, what's gonna happen? Oh uh, run, yeah. And yeah, and do you immediately know where it's gonna spawn? No, of course not. Yeah, you should avoid situations like these when there's a scent an uncertainty. And make sure you always have rune vision okay. as a storm specifically <laughs> that's super important that's really really important so before you can even recognize that the runes are gonna spawn you're gonna you, you just want you just look at the minimap and see hmm something's wrong i cannot see the runes i want to fix it and you buy the observer board yeah i'm buying quite often i don't know maybe this game i, I didn't buy but i still buy it not always, of course. Now, because you don't have vision. If Tiny had vision, if maybe he saw DD top, DD bottom, he's free to take it. But if yes. you had vision, <clears throat> there's no way you let him take it. Yes, agree. So yeah, the point yeah. I'm making is that you should not even allow him, him to grab those ruins that should be rightfully yours, just by the matchup alone. Yeah, okay. 
Like this haste, so likely, it, this haste him. should be able to be taken by him. Once again, I would say <laughs> you lucked out on this. Yeah, yeah, that's I agree on that. Just by the opponents being not as good as they could should be. I mean, so far, most of the mistakes were from the map movements and decision making. Uh, for Storm this is specifically, my <laughs> yeah, for Storm specifically, I would say everything is looking okay. Besides the fact that you are not pushing as often as it should be, as a storm. Yeah, th this is probably the understanding of the game. I, I want to know more and to uh, activate, you know, um, consciously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those things will bring you the most MMR, just understanding where to be, yeah. why to be, and how to be. In the long run, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes the teammates doesn't work good good enough <clears throat> to win the game oh no no you're at, you're at the mmr rage where you can easily solo carry every single game if you're good enough good to know them <clears throat> i wanted to slow him down <sighs> as far as i remember this game my teammates were like Probably perfect teammates, I don't know. Yeah, it's always nice to have a team that didn't feed side lanes. So yeah, I bought a ward, but it's day already, so... What a bit earlier would be... Okay, so better. in cases where you have extra ward, where would you want to put it? Now in the, in the enemy's jungle. Yeah. Yes, well, because Storm can make solo kills very easy with the ward chat. You just jump kill and that's it. Yeah, Have clarity. Yeah. He comes to the ward, the kill again, and that's it. <clears throat> yes, uh, worst case scenario, you still get a support kill. The best case scenario is that AM should be <coughs> ro ro rotating to jungle soon. And this is something you could always anticipate because he's anti mage, you know he's gonna rotate to jungle soon. So you place a yes. ward in a not so obvious location. And you know anti mages they, they're just gonna FK jungle, they're gonna be low health a lot, making it easy to just sneaky snipe them. Yes, yes, agree. <clears throat> okay, let's see how this plays out before we talk. Okay. <clears throat> okay. It's okay. It did play out. Were you going bottom because you had invisible rune? Invisibility rune? Can you say again, please? Was your movement bottom? The decision to, to move bottom made to, by the to fact kill someone. that you were invisible? To kill someone, for sure. <laughs> yeah. If... You didn't because have... We, we're... Sorry. If, Sorry. if you didn't have any invisibility rune, would you still go bottom here? No, no, no. With my low mana, no way. <clears throat> okay, cool. But probably I was talking with my teammates as well, that's why I go bottom. Yes, that's probably team work. Looks like. Yeah, looks, look, look, looked good, looked good. Because you can do nothing with 10% mana. <laughs> yep. Dyer's middle tower be taking fire. Yeah, that's a pitfall a lot of players fall in. It's like they have a lot of mana and they try to make plays. Actually, speak, sp speaking about that, I haven't seen you once hit a clarity. Actually, I do a lot. I don't know why this game I didn't. But actually, I do it. Yeah, quite a yeah. lot. Clarities. Yeah, it's a must have in a storm. Always have them in the backpack, yeah. Yes. Even if you don't need them, always have two in the backpack. Always. I agree on that. I know you probably might not believe it because you don't see it, but I usually really buy clarities a lot. 
I don't know why I did in this game so much. Probably because I wanted to rush Fortune so fast. I have no idea to be honest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My <laughs> man. Clarity is our mana. Mana is damage. Damage is creeps being taken down more efficiently. In other words, clarities are extra gold to help you rush orchid faster. That's actually true. <laughs> yeah, it's not that you don't buy clarities to get orchid faster, it's that you buy clarities to get orchid faster. Yes, I agree. Well, I don't know, I just pointed out as a as an option. I was a wrong one, sorry. <laughs> Uh, one little bit of efficiency tip. Uh, dum, dum, bam. Okay, imagine that instead of Rubik, yep, there was a Shadow Shaman. He was alive and not on the map. Yeah, now, it, for me. in this particular frame, what could you do with with that information? Just step back? No, not not yet, not yet. Mm, Tiny is back, so he can't kill me straight away. Just push the tower, go yeah. back. And... So you know, you would know that you're not in the immediate danger because even if the shaman is nearby, there's nobody to follow up if he jumps on you. <laughs> they have no damage, yes. right? Yes, correct. Right. <clears throat> so going off on that. What what is the most likely place the shaman would be hiding in, waiting for someone with damage to come over? Mm, go place a remnant near a tower. There we go. To Very see, good. to see, to see, yeah. To, see. Yeah. to see potential uh, heroes that have yeah. a chance to lock you down hiding. Agree. And that's agree. that's something that you should also be always ready to recognize and abuse. Yeah. Okay. Like, like bec you. because the scenario is, is not currently present because they don't have any shaman-like uh, stuff and the tiny is, is not invisible. You might not be thinking about it, but in the future, that's something you can you can keep in mind. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I can kill Antimid soon. I really like Storm because you kind of go insta kill fast. But it's a really worst case scenario when you lose lane and you need to farm your items. Nothing to add, nice and clean. You see, you see <laughs> the opportunity, no hesitation, go for the kill. Good. What I also really like about this match in particular is that your team made sure you make this your zone uh, until it was rewarded of course yeah that's true <clears throat> so i'm not sure how often you're doing this but that's a in general that's a really good play if you have the triangle warded anyone that walks there you have orchid anyone that walks there is basically a dead target yes that's right <laughs> so if, well, when the rubik walked past and they warded it i i would assume he would want to re-establish the vision there. Yes, yeah, would be a logic uh, move, let's say so. <laughs> so on the minimap, you see Rubik is gonna just deward it. You know, he's, he's sitting there, you know he might deward it. What what do you think to yourself right now? I would pro probably perfectly have a couple of clarities to be honest, but I could walk top and regenerate and make a kill there on Breast. But since I don't have that now, I'll probably go back on base, regenerate and TP, and that's it. Who is and the strongest hero on the map right now? Me, I guess. Yes, that is you. You have one ward, you just saw Rubik devoured it. What if you bought yourself a sentry and walked towards the triangle? Are they gonna try to kill you? Uh, 
with the information I have right so now, no. Spectre, well, has, they... Spectre has ultimate, by the way. Has ultimate, yes, that's true. Would they try to kill you? No, they would not. You're really strong and they have danger of Spectre ultimate. So, if I were you, and I would <laughs> okay. see the Rubik just denied, I would think to myself, hmm, I don't see what's going on in the triangle, but I would like to see what's going on in the triangle. What if I just buy myself a sentry, deward his sentry, and place a ward in a slightly different location? So that way, I re-establish dominance in the triangle, I make sure the anti-mage cannot use it, Tiny cannot use it, and I maintain, maintain a constant threat over that area. This is a perfect example of winning harder. You deny enemies zones to play in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Like yeah, as, as soon as you see the Rubik walk in there, you buy a sentry, you go in there, you re-establish the vision. If the game was going a little bit differently, you could always ask your supports to smoke with you if you weren't feeling confident just walking in yourself. But in this game, with the Spectral Ultimate, you can just solo re-establish dominance. Yeah, thank you. Like, uh, th that's... From this moment on, I will assume I will see a lot of pitfalls that storms fall into. Is that if you have Orchid, you feel like you need to make kills. Anti-Mage is dead, your main target is dead. If you kill... I mean, I assume you're going top to try to kill... Uh, the, 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 the pan, whatever it's called, I forgot. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Brewmaster, yeah. Brewmaster, there yeah. we go. If you kill him, let's look at the hero. Does he really need farm that much? Or is he functional with just his ultimate? No, he's a third position. He doesn't need that much of a farm. Yeah, you're, you're, killing, you're killing him. It does not yield a lot of map space. It literally nothing changes here. He's going to respawn, yes. get back, the wave is not pushed in, the tower is not in danger. You go on top making a kill does not produce any meaningful results. I understand what you're saying. Yes, yeah. correct. As an alternative, we chose, we, we did outline one option, as that is to re-establish dominance in the triangle. But if that wasn't an <laughs> option, I mean, it's the top, it's the best option you can have, but if, if you weren't thinking of that, what else could you do? The mid tower is gone. The anti mage would not feel comfortable farming in the middle. Where would anti mage still feel comfortable farming in, besides a triangle? Lower jungle, I guess. Yes. Your options now are best, best case scenario. Take the triangle back. The second choice is to help the team take down their safe lane tower. To make sure anti mage has nowhere safe to farm. That's the thing, you're playing Storm against Anti Mage, you have very strict timings. While you can kill him, all your focus should be on Anti Mage to delay him as long as possible. You go on top for the Blue Master, you're just wasting your timings. Mm hmm. Okay. So that means target priority, right? Yeah, you can, you can <clears throat> use it as a target priority. It's nice, you got kills. But I can already tell that those skills will not translate into anything. Yes, I agree with that. I can see that now as well. Spectre went back to jungle, the lane is pushed and nothing nothing really happens. Even worse, to be honest. It looks like to be shaping that way. Yeah. I'm and the, and, and, and the, anti, the anti mages now is just simply gonna farm this lane and go back to triangle and do, do his thing. Yeah, he farmed a lot actually, probably. He made a comeback if I if I remember correctly. Uh as a storm with Orchid, what is the ideal enemy distribution on the map for you? Uh do you mean when to target or No. Uh let's put it this way. What is the enemy distribution on the map which would make you feel the most comfortable? Is it like 5 top? Is it uh, anti-mage jungle, 2 top, 1 middle? Ah, okay. I know what you're saying. Um, ideally just one, to be honest. But if I see Operation and someone else, it's not a big deal. So it's... Uh, 
two if I feel if I see three here on the maps then probably it's fine I can attack top the more yeah. targets mm -hmm. the more targets are clamped in the less likely your orchid is to succeed because ah, they will okay. just defend one another yes makes sense yes. of course so the more the enemy is grouped the less you want to play in that region correct yes i i understand okay yeah so when you draw the conclusion that you would like to separate the enemies what is the best way to do that uh it was asking me a question now yeah uh well if if as i said if i see more people then i don't go well now i get this Right, right. So let's let's expand on that. Right now you are top. You know that you are cluster top. You know it's there's not a chance you're gonna make any play here. There's no That's reason to linger here. If you go bottom, if you go middle, what's gonna happen? The lanes will the lanes will get pushed by you yes. or someone else. Yes. And someone from their team will Both have to people. attend to it. And essentially, yeah. by simply making movements in different area. We are separating the enemy just like that very easily. Oh. Yeah, yeah, got this. Good explanation, thank you. <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm about six k MMR most often in my career, and seven uh, k players, eight k players, nine k players, they have really good idea of map distribution and where where everything should be but even myself at a low 6k mmr i can see that you three are clumped top and that's just just a horrible way to play the map like wh why is lion here lion doesn't need to be here the tower is not being threatened you i mean you're already walking out so you're not technically being here but even then you're still like 10 20 seconds too late for walking out you have you have full vision. Spectre is free farming. As a team, there is no reason for your lion to be playing top if Spectre is having uncontested uh, uncontested space. And where I'm going with this is that if you yourself can recognize this and you say, Hmm, Lion, you probably shouldn't be top, there's no reason for you to be top. Could you go bottom? Could you go middle? Mm -hmm. Like right now, some of you could be running a two three man team just re-establishing vision on their safe lane tower in preparation of taking it down and and there's a lot of moments where you if you would watch your own replays you would just pause at any moment and, and think about what is the ideal distribution here should my support play here should i play here and you would see a lot of answers and that's a really good exercise for you to do on your own games like pause any given frame and think about where do I want enemies to be on the map? When do I want friendlies to be on the map? Yes, yes, good point. I like that. I like that because I know this is a, a big mistake of mine. I mean, I will not expect you to consciously or subconsciously notice things, things because I myself, half the time, I'm not thinking about it. But it's just a press prospect of what you should be looking for in the future. Well, yes, of course, I understand that. <clears throat> and again, we repeat the same mistake. There is, there is a gang top, which does not really accomplish much. Like just four of you just grouping here at the worst possible lane, which gives you nothing. The triangle is re-established with simple vision and you can you could play other lanes middle is completely abandoned when it should be pushed in at all times the lion which is quite useless he could be claiming middle someone else could be claiming bottom and now the enemy the enemy team who is extremely weak they have two lanes two lanes to freely play in when they should have none I got the idea. You yeah, being maybe. in your own jungle is also the last priority in, in games like these, where you have complete control. Even okay. worse, you're interfering with Spectre's farm. She could have taken that small camp. 
Yes, okay. Shouldn't <clears throat> step on or carry toes. Again, if, if without context, I would look at this game and see you five men, and I would assume that you're extremely behind and you're simply afraid to split up. That's why running five all the time. But that's not the case. There's no reason for your team to be running as five. As long as at least you can recognize that there's no point running as five, just play a different area of the map. Have a teleport ready. Uh, be close to full mana so you can join the fights from distance. But if your team is strong, try to claim just a little bit more than one lane. Because what's going to happen if you, if you just keep five manning like that? Like you spend the last four minutes top, and now you all just like ducks. All of you just well all together. Yeah. Agree. What's going to happen? Enemy sees this and thinks, hmm, okay, they're fine bottom. I'll just go middle. And you can't do shit about it. What if they, yeah, could, what if they get top? They go shit about it. It's, it's a goose chase. They see where you go. They go the opposite lane, and now you got to chase them. When instead, with this much farm, this much space on the map, you could have three people guarding three lanes. And the enemy cannot jump because you're stronger, you can always respond. Yes, that's strong. <laughs> Especially with Storm, who has quite a lot of reach with his ultimate. Playing the map is a really important skill set to have. Playing the map correctly. <clears throat> That's the skill I need to improve. Yeah. <clears throat> right now, as you're watching, you can always just think to yourself, why am I here? Where, could, where else could I be? Because I, I would say you could agree oh. that you being here does not Yes, of course. I can see yeah. the lining pushing top and middle, so I can just walk towards if not TP. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just TPing to make a kill again, <laughs> because I'm going after kills. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good. Well, it's, it's, it's good. good. Yes, it's good. This move is good, because the wave is pushed. Uh, that, that, that's not what I was going to say. It's good that you guys are taking the towers. But you're investing way too many resources in terms of people to take those towers. <laughs> this move is not good, what you're doing right now. It is not good. Not good, not good, not good. Okay. You know that Anti Mage and Tiny are most likely in their jungle. I can get BB baited, I'm trying to say. So, what I'm trying to say here is that after you take the tower, you could do, you could send Zeus top. You could send Lion top. Why would we do that? To uh, get them XP? No. Both Lion, and, well, yes, as a secondary condition, but both Lion and Zeus, they will simply prevent the Brewmaster from pushing the tower. They would safely clear the way from distance. And That's good. the worst case scenario, Brewmaster uses, uses his ultimate, he kills, gets a kill. But what does he kill? He kills a support. It's inconsequential. Meanwhile, the rest of you, the rest four of you, if you send one of the support staff, the rest of four of you, imagine this. Imagine if you have smoked and just placed wards all over their jungle. Bam. Yes, Half the map better. denied. Half the map denied for them. And a few kills for me. I mean, a few ganks if I see someone. Yeah. Yeah, I got baited, I guess. Yeah, I think we're gonna use two sessions for this, for just this one match, because there's so much to fuck about. Okay, not a problem. And that's a winning match. Yes, that's a winning match, that's right. <laughs> Like, I, I would watch this replay without context, and I could tell this is a 4K game. Everyone's just fighting without any any afterthought where they should be fighting. They're just fighting for the sake of fighting. We're just fighting. <laughs> <clears throat> it would be nice if Dota was a brawler game, but it's a tower defense game, and that's where many low MMR people just, just get stuck, because they know the basics. They know how to fight. They don't know where to fight. 
Yes, they basically the strategies. For the past ten minutes, every single region in their in their side of the map has been dark, which is not acceptable at all. So in the future, if I will understand better the game and the map awareness, so I need to charge to be in charge like and stay supports what to do right if you can recognize those moments we have talked about yes absolutely you should rally your team and if somebody gets angry and says shut up and stuff you know because people are really toxic sometimes so just do it yourself buy a smoke buy a ward buy a sentry go on a little trip if your if your smoke breaks you get out it's very uh -huh. simple. It's it's a relatively risk free. You can do it solo, no problem. Yeah, okay. Thank right you. now in this game with this team, with this advantage, with Spectre, with Zeus, I would say this is as as good as you're gonna get in a lot of games. And with the game conditions as good and your team having so little control over their map, just imagine how bad it gets when the conditions are not as good as here. On a winning game, you're losing space. Mm, yeah. Like, you got Orchid like 7 minutes ago, and the only correct move was to kill Antimage, and since then you were just, just wondering about yeah waiting for opportunities instead of consciously making opportunities making them yeah that's yeah. the correct yeah that's i agree with that totally agree just kind of hope to stumble into a kill this this is i can see it myself now how how away i was from my goal you know from my a target let's say killing target i never killed antimage after that i just was yeah, ex exactly. I can say this again. With your team, with your advantage, there's no way anti is free farming right now. He's just yes, dying, dying non-stop. He should be dying but, non-stop. That's why they made a comeback, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, is it been? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this zip. It is minute eight nineteen. What can you assume about the opposing team's items? Well, they can have a blink dagger and stuff. Yeah. Come again. Uh, they can say uh, they can have a blink dagger and stuff like that. You know, like items yes, to catch yes, me. Yes, 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 yes. That's true. But I, I don't know. I just was sure nobody was there. Just. You That's did it. see Tiny Top, so I'll give you that, but you don't see Rubik, you don't see Anti-Mage. Yeah, because Rubik absolutely just... You can absolutely nuke you down right now if they were nearby. Because That's they, true. If you were... If you're on the enemy, if you were on the enemy team, and you wanted to kill Storm, what mm -hmm. would you think? You, you would think that Storm's not showing on the map, and... The middle lane is being it's a little pushing. bit pushed in, yeah. There's a high chance Storm might show in the middle lane. Of course. What if you camp in the trees, and if he shows to jump them, you get yes, a kill. That's... Yeah, yeah. And he gets very emotional and stuff, and, <laughs> and yeah, that's how the game back, breaks. Buys back, destroys items. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't do that. Only in very rarely situation, extra good, rarely. Good, good. Like standing on my previous point, you just cannot walk the jungle like that. With no vision. That's same right. reasons. Same reasons. Yeah. So we figure out that my map awareness is my biggest issue. So that's good. That's good for me. Yeah. You guys have zero established vision on their enemy team, and likely the enemy team recognizes that they are the weaker team so it's a really high chance that they have warded against you and there's a really high chance they see you 
So now two things will happen. Will either happen. Either they chant you, you die, or they simply avoid you. And you being here accomplishes nothing because they're they're gonna just simply move the opposite direction of you. You're, you're not exactly denying space here. But I can just literally die here. Like that, yeah. Mostly that. Mostly that. Yeah, hundred percent. So you can see, you can see how you bought orchid, but that orchid is pretty much useless. Yes, I understand that. Because if it would be, it would go in a different way if I would buy vision and <clears throat> place vision for myself. Yeah. So I can gather more information. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. Oh. What I'm trying to join there to put vision or what? <clears throat> Probably. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now look at the finally finally starting to perform a gang. I would say we should be smoked going in here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we talked about this. Well, anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Uh, let's take a little break and discuss itemization. You had two options here, BKB or Kai and Sanj. What made you choose the, la the first, the latter? Uh, one second. Probably because they don't have a quick disabling items that will uh, insta-kill me or insta-disable disable me. So that's why I decided to go a little bit more damage so I can be more efficient in fight. Well, with BKB, you are more efficient as well. That's true, but this is, of course, HP, Kaya Yasha, and extra mana regeneration and stuff. So basically, this is the option, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm going to I'm gonna paint you a new picture. OK. <clears throat> you, you you look at the lion. You see glimmer cape. You yes. See no, you see no blink. Yes. Now you're gonna walk into the enemy jungle. What happens when tiny jumps you? And before or after Rubik lifts you, most likely you will die. Yes, if, I agree. If lion had blink he could counter gank, you could turn it around. Because the lion does not have blink, and you don't have any more reliable disables on your team. Mm -hmm. Anytime you jump someone away from your team, <laughs> you have a high chance to die. I agree, I agree with that. Because Tiny plus Antimage plus Rubik, all of those three can reach you easily. The first two happening, the other one has range. Yeah, so I need to take in consideration on their items as well. Yeah. So good point. If land had blink, or if you had more reliable counter initiators like a proper offlaner, not Marcy. <clears throat> in that case you could do Kai and Sanj, because if you get jumped, if you jump, if you get counter jumped, there's there's still chances to turn it around, but as as the game is right now with with their draft, with your draft, I would say if if you get out of position, you get killed. If you get champ, you get killed, and BKB should be the option instead of Kai and Sanj here. Okay. Yes. I agree on that absolutely. Wow, <laughs> yeah, I, what a mistake. I kept waiting for this to happen for 10 seconds because I... Yeah, me too, actually. It, it's, I was very watching. it's very <laughs> obvious it was going to happen. No, I could kill him, but it just made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, now imagine if you had PKB. Team fight one easily. Yes, yes. 
That's true. Now, yeah, usually after a team fight like that, they would re-establish map dominance. <laughs> but the funny thing yes. is, he never <laughs> had map dominance to begin with. That is correct, and this is the funny part. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, now they would come back, but there's nothing to come back from. They weren't even behind, even though they should be. Our mistake. Now this was nice, you guys did recognize that Tiny was out of position, you got a kill. But again, I gotta ask, why is it four of you here? Like, is Zeus necessary for the kill? If you have Lion or Mars, I think one of those should be enough. Like, at most you should have two people, because you have Orchid, and then you have follow-up disables from either Lion or Marcy. You could send the other two to the push lanes, or get some vision done. And again, uh, those yeah, those are things you should recognize and just tell. Hmm, Zeus, we don't really need you here, we can contribute with the ultimate, or Lion, Mars is enough, or Marcy Lion is enough, you two, could you go other lanes, make make some things happen? At, at the worst case scenario, just go jungle, do some stacking for me in Spectrain. Okay, but I have a question here. Uh, for example, let's assume that there is a hero that can insta-kill. So uh, I send them on the lanes to push the lanes, and they die there. That's and... why you send supports. If they die I mean, here, if they die yeah, there, yeah. that's the opponent giving away their carrying location. Like, if you mm -hmm. dice middle to tiny, and now you say your team, tiny's middle, let's push top. Uh, yeah. Or okay. tiny's middle, let's let's uh, small gang their jungle, kill anti mage. Every single thing you do. It yields information. Yes, gathering and, information. And the higher yes. MMR you get, the more information you can read from any given situation. Yes, got this. Thank you. Like, again, I, I just see you four of you just being together, and it breaks my heart. <laughs> it is what it is right now. <laughs> I've also realized that it's been like, during those 12 minutes, all you guys have done is taken down the safe lane tower. Yes, I noticed that now as well. 20 second minute yeah, and the yeah, top yeah. two on if, if you If you guys are absolutely insisting in five manning, then just five men, but do that as you take down towers and not jungle. Oh, yes. <clears throat> like this, this top tower should be dead a long time ago. Tiny there. Uh, I remember I said to get back while the ulti works here. Which one of you is easier to kill? Is it you or is it Marcy? Uh, me? Yeah. And are you, as a storm, contributing significant tower damage? Not really. Then there is no reason for you to be hitting the tower. Yeah, that's true as well. If they don't see Storm on the map, would they be more careful about going in in the first place? Of course they will. Of course they would. So, yes. stay back, observe, wait for the moment. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> Now they have all the information, to, so they yep. just gather up and... That's true. <laughs> now, 
know, why are you still tab? Like, what's your thought process here? Just farming, I guess. A bit QB. Okay, so you have a clear personal objective. You want to get to BKB faster. What if we add secondary objectives? What if we want to farm the BKB faster and at the same time get some information where the enemies are? What would you do? You could smoke with team, get some wards done. You could go to any lane which is pushed in and, and you push yourself. Uh, not viable at this moment because uh, there's three in the middle doing that job for you and the bottom is currently unpushed so while top I would say is the least least feels good place for you to play in the bottom bottom part of the jungle if you would push that in someone would have to show I mean, both of those are not the best scenarios, given what's, given what we're working with here with zero vision. But because the past few minutes, all of them have been top, they are least likely to be bottom. Makes sense. Yes. <clears throat> so that's where you should be working to walking towards as you're working with your BKB. And definitely not teleporting. Can we go for a smoke? Yeah. Oh, there was. Okay, lucky us that we have the vision. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was very heavily telegraphed that after like... they drove you out from the stabber range, they would try to make a play because they had they are not being seen on the map, and the last known location is top, so it's. It's very obvious that they would try to smoke through the jungle from top. Well, I would say situations are works in, on our favor. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> okay. If if they smoke here, you can anticipate the smoke. You can send line first to uh, tank gang, I could say. Mm -hmm. And because you knew that anti mage was showing bottom, you know he's not gonna show up top. You could turn this gank around. Like, if you decide not to play in the bottom, like we discussed previously, then you could just turn this gank around. Yeah, I just want to go on play and <laughs> try to fix my mistakes. <laughs> have a feeling like this. And you have definitely spent more time around the top than you should feel comfortable with because of the reason that they're not showing and they're most likely smoked. Yeah, which they were, indeed. <laughs> yeah, you, you very narrowly avoided death here. Yes, yes, totally agree. Like, literally, <laughs> very close. And, 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 and let's pause a moment to talk about the mindset, like, players Players like you, like me, like someone else, they would look at the score and say, Hmm, I'm 12-2. It must, it must mean that I am playing really good. When in reality, there's so many little things that could have been done better. And that's where most people hang up. That's like, if they, they think if they have a good score, then it must be their team's fault or, or something else. Yes. So, so yeah, I, I don't really have I, a I agree. Counter. No, I agree with yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. I totally agree because people... Think, look at my score, look at your score, and stuff like that, but it don't take in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take in consideration the actions, yeah. the wording, the map awareness, and stuff. That Dota, is is, Dota is never about kills, yes, it's a strategic and team play game, yeah. The kills only faci facilitate, facilitate, I don't know which word to use, uh, the tower, the towers, and map control, and stuff like that. The kills should lead into something and not be kills for the sake of kills. Yes, yes, I agree. Can you think about what I'm gonna say? Why I didn't watch it the anti -mage first? <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily first, because there's a high chance he would anticipate it because he sees yes. a champion and he would pop the shield. 
but you have plenty of mana. Yeah. Oh, he's got mana. Well, you... yes, that's why. That's yeah, why I didn't. Yeah. Because he could, Ruby could just lift me up and he would kill me. That's why I killed Rubik. Ideally, in situations like this, before before you focus on your support, you can always just uh, look what's happening on the map elsewhere. Uh, probably I did. We had word there, so I knew. I knew about the I knew about the AM and stuff. What I'm saying is that. AA is not necessarily, not necessarily a, a hero you need to jump on because you know that Zeus and Spectre will most likely kill it on their own. So it is you... true. Yeah. But he's so, very well, quick target, I guess. So that's not an excuse. No, no. Just, okay, just, then. just, uh, just bear with me. What if just stood back here and observed a little bit? What if you have waited for Anti-Mage to jump someone? What if you saw Anti-Mage use his Manta? Yes. That, that's the green light to jump on him. Sometimes, just by waiting, not rushing for the kills. I'm not saying in this case specifically, but in a lot I understand. of situations. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you would just stay back and wait for the information to be fed to you, you would have opportunities, he would think opportunities you wouldn't have otherwise. It's true, it's true, because he would blink, he would lost he'd blink on cooldown, I could jump yeah. on him yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. More and more efficient than I've done it. <laughs> oh, this Marcy was the first kill. <laughs> Again, there's five of you, so now you have two, only two options. You either five men take this tower, or, or separate sp wins. spread out immediately. Yes. 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 Now I understand that fully. I mean, not fully, but more better than before. <clears throat> okay, that's good. That's good. No. So now we can just split and go, and that's it. Because yeah. Tiny it's almost respawning, so no, no need to stay here. And one more thing to add about distribution is that, just like we've talked before, with you being an easy target and not contributing a lot of tower damage, like, why is your lion showing? Tell him to go away, to hide himself. Yeah, yeah, make make a lot of sense, actually, Jesus. Like, why is he here? What is he doing? Is he just taking it, the weather? He would, be, he would be more efficient because if, if he would... F um, hide in the jungles because if somebody would try to you know aggro us or not aggro sorry like jump in us he would he could jump and disable yeah 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 that makes make a lot a lot of sense that is true it will also make the enemies way more reluctant to yes jump more relaxed because they correct, don't, they correct. Don't know where lion is maybe he's behind yes. the trees maybe yes not. yes that's what i meant yeah good so yeah again uh, that's not your fault specifically that's that's on line but but if that's you a good can to understand it, yes if you can recognize it if you can nudge him in the right direction i'm sure if you, if you said lion there is no reason for you to show yourself yes sure, he would I'm do sure that he would listen i'm sure he yes, would listen. yes. I, I agree with that totally agree i understand this is the best play this is the far best play by far the best this is the correct thing <laughs> yeah and, and now again the same thing like for the fifth time in this game is like that you guys take a team fight and then you're either grouping up as four or five or you're playing their own jungle <laughs> in this case both <laughs> but i have a question now yep, um, go ahead. okay so we assume that this game now it's kind of even right i mean 50-50. Yeah, yeah you, you both are farming uncontested. Yes, so we probably don't have Spectre's ulti and stuff. 
So the best play would be to let Spectre farm and us pushing lanes, right? Yeah. While pushing well, lanes, establishing some vision over some yeah, and stem area yeah, of the map. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. And stacking by uh, opportunity. Yeah, jungle, by especially your own jungle, is the last priority here. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. There was something else I was going to say, but I forgot. <laughs> Let's hope it comes Sorry. back. Let's hope. Maybe it was something I've noticed. Let's let's look at this again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing you said about Spectre's ultimate. Yeah. Is that you guys are strongest when you've got the ultimate. Yes. I mean, yeah, that's pretty obvious. So, so you should think about the map timings as the period of time where you have Spectre's ultimate and the period of time where you don't. And in the case of the latter, where you don't have Spectre's ultimate, your movements should be more of a defensive kind. So which means uh, establishing some vision like closer to the river mm -hmm. and maybe farming close to the waves but not the waves directly unless you have safe wave clear like like maybe Zeus which can do it without showing but as soon as you have Spectre's ultimate you move in to play more aggressively those wards are now deeper supports are now showing to try to base some more information from the enemy okay I understood that I mean, I am throwing a lot of concepts at you. I'm not gonna sure how many will stick. Uh, well, with map awareness, I'll be more conscious now. From now on, I'll try to, of course. Yeah. It's not that easy, you know, to play one game and to, uh, you know, straight your mistakes. Exactly, that's why I, I made it clear that I recommend having sessions separately just so you have time to think time about to think everything about. that that's was said true. yeah 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 that's true i'm not because... sure if if you have imagined of how many things would be revealed to you during this match no there was <clears throat> of course uh, about map awareness about supports not showing up at the some uh, at the specific times yeah yeah There's about like, the oh. about the targeting uh, uh, Targeting uh, precision, right? No, no, not precision, no. Targeting height, hunting. About the because I had uh, because I had orchid like for literally eight minutes and use it. Yeah, target priority. About the, yeah, 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 priority. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, about the vision and the enemies jungle visioning because I I I've could have made this game for myself for twenty five minutes rather than fifty something or forty. Just me myself with the wording and the wording and yeah, uh, I'm gonna put stuff. it this way: if you, if your team was being live coached, you would have ended the game by now. Easily. Yeah, yeah, probably you're right. <clears throat> the anti-mage would have never been given space, and you would just five men every single outer tower and yes, choke, choke them out. And that's it, and end the game. And that's it, yeah. Slow burn. It's, you know, it's it's not a thing that I need to learn to last last hits or something. It's map awareness is much important than than this stuff. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Game sense, game sense. Yeah, game sense, correct. Which will come by by practice <laughs> and. Advising like yours. Yeah, yeah. And mage has been dead for like twenty seconds, and all five of you are still in your jungle. And for the third time, it breaks my heart. Yeah, <laughs> two guys jungle. Well, is yours is stacking or what he's doing? No, not stacking. 
I don't know what he's doing. Checking for vision maybe, and they're now jungling. We can just push, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're at least, we're at least for the uh, enemy's jungle. At worst case scenario, I guess. If not pushing. <clears throat> uh, in the meanwhile, what changes happen once you acquire BKB? Like, how does your well, team composition can... and engagement priority changes once you have BKB? Because I can engage very more frequently than before. More frequently and more aggressively. Efficient and aggressively, yeah. So, yeah, so if you were a little bit afraid, like uh, five minutes ago, to show on the map right now, as long as you're leading, yes, yeah, you can take. You can simply just walk into the jungle and take some fights. Just taunt them. Ideally, this should be Mars's job because she should have been the one to acquire BKB first, and because she's the Athlaner, she's supposed to lead the team at that stage of the game. But secondarily, if if, if not, not if that's not happening, then that's your job then. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. And for the first time in like 15 minutes, you guys have vision in their jungle. Yeah, Granted, it's, nice. it's a it's a shitty ward. It doesn't <laughs> reveal much, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I agree on that. Like this, right now, this frame right here is the correct distribution. Because the enemy team is taking your jungle, you're taking their jungle. Spectre is not in danger of dying because she knows where the enemy team is. And your team is not in, in danger of dying either because if you guys get champed, you're four and Spectre can always join. This is the ideal setup right now, right here. Yeah, it looks, looks very good. I agree on that. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> and that's very good that you are just yourself just showing yourself in the enemy team. That's that's what I'm talking about. You can take the charge here, take the lead. Okay, I did understood that. Yeah. Probably at that moment. Now when that before I said that you shouldn't hit a tower because now that I have BKB, because of stuff, I now that you have BKB, it all changes. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that five of you did not immediately teleport out for no reason. Well, to be honest, I didn't think of that. I'm no, not watching it's, him. It's, it's a joke. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have. Oh, it would it be okay. a bad play? Yeah, no, no, no. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, both of the teams have traded towers. And now we have the same situation we had before. All five of you somehow are in the same region for no reason. If Spectre is going top, where, where should the rest of you go? On the other side of the map, like and the triangle and the uh, vision, where the vision is, we can attack them, basically. Yes, anywhere okay. but top, anywhere but where yes. Spectre is. Like, you full well have information on the enemy team, you see Rubik, you see AA. You know their supports are squishy, they're gonna wanna hide behind their cores. If you see Rubik and AA, you can assume that Tiny and Brewmaster is somewhere nearby. With that information extracted, you know that Spectre is safe, there's no reason to, for you guys to stand stand near here. You could claim some some space somewhere else. Yeah, I agree on that. Like, uh, from the very limited options, again, because you have no vision, you guys have, well, very limited options, basically. 
you can establish vision. You can smoke to get kills and then establish vision. Or you can maybe bait a team fight with you and Mars on top and expect to join. Try to hope to win that team fight and then you can take objectives. But what you're doing right now as a team. We're farming. We're farming yeah. as four people. Yeah. Very that's, nice. That's the least. The last thing we should be doing here. Like, if you're. <laughs> Like the only case where you should be farming is where you have an obvious late game carries from the safe lane offline and you have mid game timings. And then, then that's the acceptable outcome. But right as of this right now, you as a storm, anti mage can always kill. You don't want anti mage to get fat. You don't want this situation to even happen. Eventually he gets. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you don't want to. If you're playing storm, you definitely don't want anti mage to get farmed. Well, I'm just seeing the same map positioning mistakes repeated, so I think we can just skip this part until something interesting happens. No problem. Oops. That's the interesting part. <laughs> yeah, that's the interesting part. You all just get wiped. <coughs> yeah. The enemy team should be taking Roche. They are. Okay. Now, after 30 minutes of status quo, the enemy team is now leading. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> and you guys are playing from behind. Yeah, from now on, I guess this game goes into win a team fight and push, and that's it. I honestly have no idea how you won because the, the way we have been seeing so far as a team, not <laughs> specifically as the team as a whole, should have been losing. I understand that. Let's have some fun. I really like actually the build through Bloodthorn and. Agonims, it's so powerful. And Shard, of course. Yep, my personal favorite. Yes, which I learned from you. So, thank you. Oh, that's a nice smoke reveal by Zeus. Okay, so let's take a moment. Right now you all are behind, so the map does not feel very good to play in, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But because you have PKB, as long as you see at least one of their heavy damage dealers, as long as you see Tiny or Anti-Mage, that's the only two heavy damage dealers. As long as you see one of them, you know that the other one cannot kill you. So if you see Tiny Bottom, where do you play? Top top or middle yes basically yes. what i'm saying is, is as long as you see one of them you play yes where he isn't and that way you you the team you yourself personally are constantly shoving waves which makes it awkward for them to push in because now they have to de-push yes and eventually what's gonna happen some of them is gonna come back maybe that reveals some opportunities for your team to counter gang but at the very least it will delay their high ground siege, which is what you want in situations where you're playing from behind. Yes, because if <clears throat> I can tip you back, but the lane is pushed, so yeah. So if Tiny anyway. champs, you Phantom Mage champs, you just you just make yeah, be to be back or just walk away. Or just zip out. <clears throat> so basically, all of the three lanes are being pushed in right now. When it well did, could be just two or one. Yeah, great. And this this high ground siege with the correct play, it probably wouldn't even happen. Should have waited a bit too early jump. I'm waiting for my second skill. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 
uh, the move you just did, it's called high risk zero reward. Means no need to do that. <laughs> no need to do that now. What if we get accidentally bashed dead? Yeah, but Rubik's dead, so that's why nobody could yeah. harm me. So that's if, if anti mage and Sherman, you cannot do moves like this. Okay, oh, bear in mind. I mean, you did get lucky that he didn't have Abyssal with some cooldown, but that's that's a death move. You you you're dead. And even even if you don't die, what happens back? You just you, you just force yeah, him just... to be back, and then you're just sitting out. You have a timeout for no reason. You you've, you've put yourself in a timeout. Yes, and you don't have even the second skill as this. Is not loaded fully. And I'm confident that uh, if that didn't happen, uh, anti mage would be dead. If you didn't put yourself in a timeout. Yeah. Um. <sighs> Yeah, that's what I was talking about. If 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 one of the damage dealers are dead, then you can just walk away from the other one safely. Yeah, that's correct. That's a really nice information to have. Like you see, that's a you know, very good you, example. <laughs> yeah, if if their uh, position three was like centaur axe, then that entire mentality just goes out of the window. You no no longer can play like that. Well, of course, all depends on the heroes. Yeah, it's, it's a nice thing to recognize. Dead. Unfortunate. I'm now watching the game and literally wondering like how we won the game. But I now remember how. I was the aggressor. So anti mage got farmed a lot. Yep. <laughs> Why didn't buy back? Because Spectre is dead, and even if you did, you wouldn't accomplish anything. Oh, probably. I had a feeling that uh, just, uh, I don't know, one, two seconds that if I would buy back when they chased Tiny, uh, we would probably accomplish something. Like, no, not here. Like, I don't and know. now here? What we have is a low risk, high reward situation because you know Tiny is teleporting. And if you initiate zip, by the time you complete the zip, Tiny will be out of the picture. And just like we talked before, only two damage dealers. If Anti Mage jams you, BKB, either way, uh, Pre Master is dead. Oh, yeah. Now and I now, know this information. Yes, and now it's a good play. Did I zip in? No, we didn't. No. <laughs> we kind of did, like five seconds too late. <laughs> but as you're responding, I mean, you are yourself watching this. You you have the information. You know that uh, you have already responded. Even... You know you know he's walking back. You can just preemptively zip and hit him. Yeah, even even two of them. Even when there are three of them, I could yes, probably kill yes, two yes, of them. Yes, yeah, yes. just yeah. Breeze Master and Tiny just. Walks away home to tavern. Yeah, that's right. That's and killing right. them at this stage of the game, that's this would give you a lot of space to breathe. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Good opportunity was it was. <clears throat>
baited. Yep, kind of. And uh, I have a problem. Oh, let's talk after this. Okay, so you jump, and your immediate thought is to jump Rubik, the least important target. I did. Did I? Did I? Yes, I did. Yeah. And then because again, I had no BKB, that's why we yeah, no, but I had a vortex. And then again, you put yourself in a timeout. Yes. Where, where instead, you could have just waited a little bit, and aimed for a moment where anti mage's shield was clearly on cooldown and jumped him. That way, during Vortex, you could kill Rubik, you could deal some damage to Anti-Mage. But either way, it would have been more efficient because that way, during Vortex, Spectre is hitting Anti-Mage as well, Zeus is hitting Anti-Mage as well. Rubik would just probably just die from the splash damage. Yeah, same. So, yeah, yeah. There's no reason for you to, to kill a creep. I would say this way. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but it's true. You wait one second, anti mage reacts to Spectre's ultimate, he pops the shield, you jump one second later, both of you kill anti mage. Yeah, instead. Instead, again, he walks away and you're in a timeout. Yes, yes. Walk back to base, sell your shoes, buy travels, push bottom. Okay. Yeah, look look how much time you, you, your team is gonna move in when you can just teleport to the incoming bottom wave and kill the AA easily. So usually why, well, not usually, basically with this move, selling trades by traveling and TP bottom, I'm forcing a buyback, that's for sure. At the very least, you're forcing a buyback. Yes, at the very least, correct. At the very... Best case scenario, you kill their I only just, defender. Yeah. So that that's a kill, and force buybacks. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> So win game, but so many mistakes. I mean, map mistakes and team yeah. mistakes as well, all together. Did you have a general guess on how many things would be pointed out to you today? Uh, with the map awareness, I was pretty sure I would had some points. Mm. Didn't expect that wording, to be honest. <laughs> But then I saw the... Actually, no, I did expect that, but I didn't expect you to point me that that mistake. I don't know why I thought that, because even in games, I thought that wording is a problem. But I didn't thought I can do this as often as, as it can be done, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I understand. Um, what else? The laning stage a bit about the understanding the heroes burst damage and stuff I did it I know I did not expect that you told me mm. oh the timing precisioning like you told me how more efficient to do that I mean to stack to go to the room to look around I mean to, how to gather more information out of the map and uh, yeah that, that's more even you know, little things, but they, I mean, they're 
usually people like to call these little things, but they aren't because of the highest MMR. These are the things that wins the game, not not Ex like yeah, exactly exactly not like not like the the <clears throat> how to say the skill to denying and CSing and stuff, you know, because everyone is going so crazy about this. So yes. So th there's a lot of things actually I've I've known for myself. So yeah, thank I, you I, I'm, I'm glad so far it's been useful. Yeah, In the meanwhile, been... let's take a moment about to talk about this situation <laughs> right here. Can the enemy team Attack kill us. you twice before you escape? No, I don't no, think so. No, they cannot. Can, no. The enemy, can the enemy team kill Spectre before she just all send daggers out? Mm. Let me think. No, 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 of course not. I, I will secure her. Yeah, you would, you would just go to help. So, why on earth are you two in the same area? I have no idea. <laughs> Literally no idea. Yep, one more thing to look out for. Both of you should own a lane, push it, and go to each other's help. If the enemy team dares to engage when they shouldn't even dare because you have ages. So you're telling me that we need to be close, one, I mean, not far from each other, right? Is that true? You automatically are close because of your heroes. You have your ultimate, she has her ultimate. And if oh, fights yeah, happen, yeah. You, you guys join each other. Okay, yeah, understood. And I understood the meaning as well. I was just asking, should we stay more together or no? Yep. Yeah, basically with the Wult and stuff. You're right. If you were like a PA carry at <laughs> Magnus Middle, then yeah, you should be way closer. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've tried to... Okay, I let them kill me. Oh, I didn't. Okay, I'm pretty sure you saw this yourself, but just to confirm what you should be doing right now. Just jump into the middle and zip and second vortex them both. And then what? Uh, then I could step back, but I can stay and die there. I mean, and well, not die, but it's, yeah, it's more profitable to get back, I guess, because you want more information together. Not necessarily information. When you jump into the middle of Tiny and you and press your ultimate and zip out, does your team need your help to kill those two with Spectre's ultimate and you know the Spectre is coming? Of course my team needs to kill me. Of course not. There is no reason for you to be here. Why are you wasting ages here? Uh, you, you just did, waiting you, for them yeah. to... Just yeah, waiting yeah. for them to... to... Cast all skills. I you did, your, this was you did, my you did your job. You silenced the blue master. You vortex both of them and just uh, get out. Yeah, get so more profitable, done. more more yeah. profitable move will be just to jump vortex and go back or just yeah, save go ages. Back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And now you have traded ages for a blue master, which we have already established during this game is not a primary yeah. leading. Man of the enemy team, which is tiny or anti mage. Tiny or anti mage, yes, I remember this. And as a result, you both lost PKB and Ages. True. Which the better team could definitely abuse. They would say, Storm in the next minute cannot fight. Let's do something. Let's end the game. They buy back, they push you in. They win the game. Yeah, makes sense. I also hate the fact that I'm using spells when no needed. I mean, like a couple seconds ago, I used second skill on AA when he doesn't go away. But at that moment, like, anti mage could jump. Yeah, true.
I think this is the longest replay analysis I've ever done. <laughs> well, sorry about that. Right, that's cool, that's cool. I'm getting paid for it, no regrets. Well, we can put S3 if you want, S3 sessions. I'm, I'm not, it's not a problem for me. I've learned a lot already. <laughs> Fine with me as well. Money is money. It's always up to you. I will take you up on that offer, no problem. Okay. No, 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 not you, not you, not you. Sand, Sand uh, one supports, of the supports. Yeah. There we go. Because now they're getting choked. <clears throat> luckily, luckily they didn't. Just, just look back at this game and see how many times you yourself consciously put yourself in a timeout, in a position where you couldn't join fights or couldn't join fights efficiently. Mhm. Mm I agree on that. Storm of all heroes is the one that should be always ready to join fights. Nice, nice, I was waiting for this. What a juicy opportunity. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Could be game winning opportunity if you kill anti mage again, which I suppose is how you won the game. Yes, I I, I zipped and vortex him. Because I saw him far away from saw him alone. In his base actually. <laughs> I remember this. And I expected my supports to come and support me straight away, which they did. So we came. Yeah, the money shot. Gonna wait to see it. Because probably there was no nobody around him except Robic, maybe for ten meters away or something. Yeah, you see, they go one by one, which is a mistake, no? Yeah. Them. They threw the game right, right. Yes. Yes. Scale. Yes. <clears throat> An anti mage straight be straight by back, which is a mistake as well, I think. If you break this match down, is that the first thirty minutes should have ended? Yes. And then the next true. twenty minutes they should have ended. <laughs> and now yeah, and now you should end. You think, it is eventually. true. So here is the ending moment. I remember so he the anti mage. Is it here or not here? No, I guess not here. Oh, my bad, sorry. It was hyped up and didn't happen. I have regrets. <clears throat> oh, here, when I saw more north, yeah. Always just wait, sorry for talking. Uh, it's good that Lion is top and not you this time. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yes. <laughs> Oh, like here, yeah. Here I saw anti mage, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little it's bit just off. Late, games, late, late game storm is very often the deciding factor just by the threat of the very good or blood torn black hole. Yes, yes. We basically storm with. Well, you of course know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, refresher, refresher and blood torn and stuff. Jesus, it's so powerful. It's just. Enjoyable to play in cast, you know. <laughs> 